Hey, what's up and welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're gonna be editing an image inside of On One Photo Raw using the layers and a technique that I've picked up on that I think is gonna be of value. Now, if you don't have On One Photo Raw and you wanna pick it up, you can save 20% by using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20 and I get a small commission for that and I greatly appreciate everyone who uses that code. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the software and get going. So you can see I already have On One Photo Raw open. I'm inside of the edit module and so far all I've done to this image is apply Brilliance AI. So if I show you the before, this is what the image looked like coming into the edit bay. And this is what the image looks like after Brilliance AI. I did increase this from my typical Brilliance AI adjustments, but that's not really as important. So where does the technique that I want to teach come in? Well, one sometimes you want to change the camera profile so you can get a different look in the image. The problem is you can't really mask in these camera profiles. Like it doesn't exist in either of these other tabs. It only exists inside of the develop tab and right here at the very top. Now I will put a disclaimer. You only get the option to change a color profile on raw file types. So that'll be a DNG or whatever your camera native raw file is. All right. So if you're working on a TIFF or a JPEG and you see this grayed out, that's the reason why. What do I want to do? Well, I enjoy the camera landscape, the vibrancy that comes with this, but I feel like if you look over here at the edges, it doesn't blend very well or transition very well. It just looks a little blocky or splotchy. So I'm not a huge fan of that. All right, let's go ahead and zoom back out and go back to on one standard. This just seems way more natural and it's more consistent in my personal opinion. All right, let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. One of the ways that I can blend the camera profiles is by creating a new layer. So what I'm going to do is come up here to my layer section. Now, if your layer section is collapsed, then just go ahead and click on the word layers and you'll see your layers pop up. And the second icon looks like two sheets of paper folded over each other. That is the duplicate layer button. Now, whatever layer you have selected in this particular example, I only have one layer there, so that's why I am just able to come and click this. But let's say you had three or four layers over here. Make sure that you select the layer that you want to duplicate first. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and click that button on one thinks it through a little bit and it pops up a second layer. So for organizational purposes, I do recommend everyone does this. We're going to call this original. And then we'll call this landscape camera profile. At the moment, nothing has changed, okay? But you can see I still have access to my camera profiles, regardless of which layer that I'm on. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this particular layer down to camera landscape. And I'm now presented with the exact same issue that I had in the first place. Well, what I enjoy about this is really the color that comes through. One of the cool things about on one is it kind of takes a Lightroom Photoshop approach and allows you to blend your layers internal to the same application, uh, which is why I really enjoy working in layers and in on one overall. So what I'm going to do is come up here to the blend option and I'm going to come all the way down to color. All right. Now, what color does is it gets rid of tonal values and it only transmits the color. Now, the issue that I was having with the landscape previously is because the tonal changes uh, around here were also getting impacted with the color. 
but because I've separated that, I've been able to blend this a lot better. If you got questions about that, then let me know and I'll do my best to answer that. So now that I have the color mode set, let's see what that looks like turned off and turned back on. And you can just see how that vibrancy really comes through. Now, I can do all the other things that I would be able to do on a layer, which is lower the opacity. So if I think that it was too strong, this is like with none of the effect on there. And this is me gradually blending in that color. And this is one of those things that if you really, really, really want to control your color, this is how you can do it. All right. So I think something like that looks about right. Turning it off and on, you could just see how that vibrancy punch comes through and I get that landscape look without overdoing it. Now, you could continue working on this particular layer. Here's what I recommend you do whenever you work with a layer, at least in the way that I just showed where I'm blending two layers together. My recommendation to you is to click on the top layer, the hamburger menu or the three bar menu and come down to either merge visible or new stamped layer. The difference between the two, if I merge visible, it's going to smash everything together and make one file or one layer. If I click on new stamped layer, it's going to merge all of those layers that are underneath it and put it into a single layer up above. And this is a non-destructive way. So just think of it as merge visible is destructive. You're going to lose the ability to come back and remodify this later or new stamp layer is that non-destructive method where you won't have to worry about uh, if you lose the information, all right? I personally like to work with new stamp layers, but because I don't think I need to come back to this information, I'm just gonna go ahead and click Merge Visible. The other difference when you do Merge Visible versus new stamp layer, if you maintain multiple layers inside of an on one file, you get a dot on photo file, which is a little bit larger of a file. So if you are pressed for a space on your computer or your hard drive, I recommend using merge visible. It is destructive, but it saves you a little bit of space. So now that I have my new layer with the color the way that I want, now I get access to Brilliance AI all over again. I don't think I'm going to reactivate that, but essentially this is working as if I had just opened the image for the first time. My tone and color is completely adjusted, so I can readjust this if I needed to. So let's say I wanted to shift the white balance. All right, now I will note that once you merge the visible layer, I end up with uh, not being able to change the color profile or the camera profile. All right. But if I want it to, I can come in here and modify a bunch of other things. So I'll just do some very basic color edits like so. So that's before or after the merge visible layer. And then this is after a few of those edits. And then of course you can come in here and add in all of your effects. So for this, I would probably throw on a sunshine filter because I like what it does in these types of images. And I'll just pull up on the warmth a little bit, maybe saturate it just a touch. All right. And for this, I think I'll pull down on the opacity. I don't need it all that uh, potent on the image. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good right there. And then of course I would add in a glow. Now I do realize that the sunshine filter has a glow on it. Uh, I personally like to separate my filters if I can. Uh, that's just a personal preference. You don't have to do that. Let's see here. I don't know if I want the halo to be too and 
The last thing that I'll probably add to this image is a little bit of dynamic contrast. And I'm going to put that underneath the glow. And I think I'll just go with, let's go with soft because I don't need a whole lot. It's just really for presence in the image. Like if I turn it off and turn it on, you can see what it's doing to the overall image. Now, I don't really need the contrast in the surrounding areas. So what I'll do is add a mask and I'll just use a brush here. So we'll go with a we're going to invert the mask so it doesn't show up anywhere. And then I'm just going to paint this in on the areas that I want it to show up. So just areas of detail, personal preference here. You could do whatever you want to do on your image as it makes sense. And I think that works pretty good. Uh, you could see what it's doing just in these areas right here. Just some really soft contrast to help draw the eye to the overall image. Um, and then I know I always say like the last thing, but I really enjoy making a vignette. And to do that, I use local adjustments. That's just a personal preference. So we'll just leave that on negative exposure. I'm going to hit the letter M on the keyboard. What's going on here? Hit the letter M. There we go. Got my masking bug. And we're going to go with edges. Click there. I meant to go center. There we go. And I'll just drag this in and then feather it like crazy. And I'll pull down on the opacity so it doesn't blend like all the way in. So now that I've done that, it looks like I need to brighten the overall center of the image. So what I'm going to do, we'll call this, I'm going to just put Vin so I know that that's the vignette. And we'll come here like so. Hit the letter M. And this time we will use edges and this allows me to just brighten up the center of the image now obviously that is way too bright I just want to open up the shadows and I still want to keep that contrast so I'm going to push the contrast and maybe even pull down on the blacks here a little bit and up the structure right there in the center all right and then that's a little too strong, so I'll pull down on the opacity. So if I turn this off and turn it on, you can see it's just like a nice little spotlight. And I'll even warm it up in that area just a little bit. Maybe only one, one tick mark will do the trick. So let's go ahead and take a look at our before and after. This is without the edits, and this is with the edits. Hopefully you found some value in today's content. If you did, smash the like button. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. Whatever questions you have about On One Photo Raw and this editing technique that I showed, please let me know down in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer it. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.